booktube i'm tia and i'm new here i have been lurking for a little while and i've decided to finally get involved so i'm going to do the 10 years 10 books tag that was made by rick mcdonald um, i am bending the rules a little bit because my books aren't in any order i've just chosen 10 books from the last 10 years that were my favorites Okay, let's go. This is my favourite book, Miles Franklin, My Brilliant Career. This book just completely blew my mind. It was written by a teenage girl in the 1800s and I wanted to read it because it's an Australian classic, but I kind of had this, you know, assumption in my mind before I read it that I thought it was going to be a romance and it was going to be all this like flowery descriptions of the countryside and you know what shame on me for assuming that a book written by a woman should be about romance because this book is actually an anti-romance and it's really a satire about the expectations society has for women it's the story of a teenage girl called Sibylla and she wants to be a writer and she is just absolutely ferocious like the whole book is basically just her battling against her low social status as a woman it's so well written um, I was completely inside the mind of the character so funny so smart and it's just so relatable as well. It's kind of like if someone from 2020 was transported back in time to the 1800s, how angry you would be about how racist and sexist everyone is. True History of the Kelly Gang, another Australian book. This one is about a bushranger called Ned Kelly. Um, a bushranger is an outlaw from the colonial times. Um, Ned Kelly, he was a real person and he has this kind of mythological status in Australia, kind of like a Robin Hood figure. Um, he was a criminal, he did kill a bunch of people, but he also made a stand for the poor convict settlers. So this book is a fictionalised version of his life and it's written in a very distinctive voice. Um, it might take you a few pages to catch on to it, but once you do, you are just in the bush with Ned. You're shooting at wombats and you're eating cockatoo pie and building campfires and stealing horses. It's just, it's so much fun. It's so gritty and rough and the language is just so purely like of the Australian bush. It is a big one, but for me, it could have even been double the length, length. I was just enjoying it so much. And like, you know, when you're just eating this really delicious meal and you just want to gorge yourself on it and you don't want to stop eating or like, you know, when you see a snake eating a wallaby and, and like, they don't really care how big it is. They just sort of dislocate their jaw and then they just sort of go and they just like start to eat that whole wallaby like that was me reading this book just like <laughs> it's just so good it also makes some um pretty heavy hitting points about class conflict in australia um the movie is just awful read the book then come back here and tell me that you read it kidnapped i just thought it was so much fun there's a murder, there's a shipwreck, you've got an evil old uncle who's trying to steal your inheritance, you're running through the heather, you're escaping from the soldiers, you're, you know, you're eating drumach and sleeping in the mud, the pace is really fast, the language is beautiful, it's just, like, there's a reason that it's, you know, one of the most famous adventure classics. Where do camels belong? This one is actually non-fiction. It's a popular science book and it really changed my perspectives on the natural world. Um, it talks about how we can be fixated on the idea of nature having permanence. It also talks about 
which species are going to make it through into the future with us humans and basically it's a whole lot of pigeons. This is another non-fiction, Dark Emu by Bruce Pascoe. In my opinion, this is the single most important book published in Australia in the last 10 years and maybe even the most important book from the last 200 years. Uh, so this book gathers evidence to show that First Nations Australians did have permanent settlements and farmlands um, before European colonisation. They were not simply nomadic hunter-gatherers. To understand the impact of this book, you you do need to know a little bit um, a little about our national collective memory. The Wake. This book has the most incredibly dark threatening, impending sense of doom. Um, it's about a man called Buckmaster in Anglo-Saxon England and the idea is that you're sitting by the fire with him as he tells you his tale and the book is written in a made-up language. It's meant to reflect the feeling or the idea of Old English so it is a little bit hard to follow at first, so I just read along with an audiobook. It was just so immersive and you just get swept up in the building tension of the plot that you kind of just forget that you're reading this really bizarro made up English. <laughs> What really impressed me about the novel was that it achieved this really intense supernatural mood because of Buckmaster's superstitions and there's also um, in the novel this kind of floating, looming second voice who you don't know who it is, it's, it's part of a mystery that unfolds as you go through the book and even though they're there is no ma there's no magic, there's no supernatural elements, but the book just had this kind of otherworldly feeling like you were kind of, you know, looking through the mist into the medieval world. It's definitely not a hero's journey, it's more of like a dark, complex, twisted character study. Um, one thing I really didn't like about this book though was that it did include um, unnecessary sexual violence which I just I just hate when authors think that they can sprinkle that in um, like it doesn't like the the book had already achieved its dark atmosphere without that so okay number seven is all the birds singing this one actually really disturbed me and after I read it it kind of just made me feel like I should get therapy, like it was really um, very dark. It's about a young woman in Outback Australia who is trying to escape something from her past. Parts of the story are told in reverse chronological order, so as you get more of her backstory the mystery unravels and it is, it's messed up. I'm glad I read it because I think it does justice to how shame and abuse can impact someone's psychological well-being and it's not a book that you enjoy but it definitely is very gripping and I think that most women would be able to relate to it in some way um, such as the situation where a man is making you feel really uncomfortable or threatened but you just um, like you kind of just strategically act normal or even friendly because you don't want him to smell your fear. Number eight is The Man Who Spoke Snakeish. This is a weird one. Um, it's very whimsical, a little bit uh, you know, offbeat. It's set in this imaginary version of medieval Estonia where there are these pagan people who live in the forest <clears throat> and they are 
milking wolves and having sex with bears and hibernating with snakes and they really hate the village because in the village people are doing weird things like they are eating bread. This is Congo Journey. It's the story of a man who hears some rumours about a dinosaur-like creature in the Congo jungle. So he travels there to see if it might be a, a large species that's unknown to science. And the weird thing about reading this book was that I just, I didn't know whether it was real or fiction. Like the people and the details are just so specific and vivid. Um, but the, the situations that the man is in are just so, uh, they're just so, <laughs> it's just, it's just really, it's just really an adventure. Um, there's like baby gorillas and there's guns and machetes and drugs and um, one of the major themes is um, superstitions. The Sisters Brothers. I couldn't actually think of a 10th book so I just chose this one because um, Rick who made this tag is Canadian and this is a Canadian book so I wanted to shine some light on it. It's a modern western about two brothers who are assassins and they're on this mission to kill um, this really sort of mysterious um, prospector character and the book just goes off on this really weird direction that you never would have guessed. It's very charming, it's a very um, quirky and there's also a secret kind of bonus layer to the book that draws upon Greek mythology and so yeah it's not necessarily a favourite of mine but I did really enjoy it and you know it's not every day that you come across um, literary absurdism in a western setting. Um, you can probably tell that I love a good hearty adventure story. Um, I will probably be talking about a whole bunch of adventure stories on my channel. Um, I love to analyse the ways that um, adventure stories explore nature but also the ways that um, they can uh, exoticise foreign people. Um, I think it's it just is a really interesting insight into uh, culture clashes. Okay thanks Rick for the fun tag. So I'm going to tag some people now I guess. Um, this is my first video so I'm not sure how people are going to find it. But um, okay, so I'm just going to name a bunch of my favorite YouTubers. So there's Big Owl Books. I am just so impressed by the way that she is able to articulate these really thoughtful analyses. So there's also the Reading Outlaw. She's just so thoughtful about the way that literature or books can reflect social values and how it might impact the way people view themselves or the world. And Carla's Book Bits, this is a new channel that I have found recently and she is talking about a whole bunch of interesting like horror stories and sort of supernatural kind of stories that are a little bit obscure to me. So I love to find things that are a little bit ex obscure and um, you know exciting. So I'm really enjoying her channel right now. At the moment, I am reading Mama Day by Gloria Naylor, and I'm about to start reading The Gallows Pole by Ben Myers. So thanks so much for watching, and hopefully I will see you again soon.